everyone. It's Coach Tam, Chief Visionary Officer of 265 Point Total Fitness, and I am checking in after our Strive Experiencing God workout and Bible study. We had an opportunity tonight to dig into a new chapter where we learn about God, his nature, uh, his purposes, and his ways. And let me tell you, it was a really, really impactful study. So let me bring you up to speed. As we went into this new chapter, there was a story of, of a woman who at this point was married with children, but her view of God was shaped by her experience as a child. So unfortunately, it was a situation where um, her father left her and her mom at a really early age, and she always wondered, seemingly kind of blaming herself of, if I had been a better daughter, maybe my father would have stayed. So she had a view of God as being hard and cold and unforgiving and unloving. And so this chapter is designed to get us to see God in a different way and how the Holy Spirit helps in this process. So one of the key things that we learn tonight uh, is really the, you know, the role of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is there to help reveal God's nature to us. This woman had actually grown up in church and spent her whole life in church, but it wasn't until this, this encounter that she had uh, with one of the gentlemen from Experiencing God that she was really able to see God in this way. So we need the Holy Spirit um, sometimes working through other people to help us understand God's nature. Uh, we also need the Holy Spirit to help us understand God's ways because as scripture reminds us, his ways are not our ways. So we're not going to figure out his ways on, his, on our own. And then to understand his purposes and his plans. So the way that he does things may not make sense to us, but because there is a bigger purpose and a bigger plan. So we also talked about how one of the ways that this whole process of experiencing God and trusting God is going to be easier is if we have the right viewpoint of God. If we believe that he is who he says he is and that he's going to do what he said he was going to do. So we talked about how this all comes back to trust. What do I really believe about God? The answer to that question is not in what I say, but is ultimately in what I do. So how I respond to those nudges from God tells me more about what I believe than what I say. We also talked about the different you know, natures of God. So God Almighty, God our provider, God our protection, um, God showing himself as a forgiving and unchanging God. These experiences that we have with God are so, so important, not just for that moment in time, but also to help build our faith. Because as we go through this journey called life, we're going to continue to encounter tests, trials, and challenges. So the good thing about getting through these experiences is that we can look back and we can see how faithful God has been. And that helps us to be strong, to be more encouraged, to have more hope as we encounter the next obstacle. So these, these experiences that we go through are designed to build our faith. Now, this last one is super, super important. And we actually got a chance to explore a story um, in our Experiencing God text. So just to summarize it, there was a gentleman <laughs> who was leading a church, a very small church, a church of 100 people. And about 40 of the people decided to go through this training process. And then about half of that, 19 people, decided to go through the Experiencing God study. They wanted to see what God was going to do with this small congregation. So as the story unfolds, this um, small Ukrainian group joins the church. They offer to donate a house to the church in Ukraine. And everyone's wondering, what is the purpose of this? Now, again, a very small congregation of people. As the story unfolded, we learned that they were behind in their budget, but they felt that God was leading them to start missions in Ukraine. And then someone raised their hand and said, yes, I am ready to go. But here, another problem. The church only had $21 in their bank account, but they trusted God. They prayed instead of freaking out. And lo and behold, $4,000 was provided to start this mission activity. 
And as a result of this, there was just one thing after the other, after the other, where they saw God move. They saw people come to Christ. They were able to, uh, to build Bible colleges, to give out food, to help the community. And there was an opportunity for this, this church planner in Ukraine to actually go on national television and talk about the goodness of God. So there was a bigger purpose and a bigger plan that would not have been realized if that small group of people was not willing to step out on faith and be obedient. So his purposes and his plans are not going to always make sense to us, but again, it comes back to trusting that God is who he said he is and that he's gonna do what he says he's gonna do. And that's good news for us, right? As we go through this study, we can start to build our faith and God's ability to perform whatever he has dropped in, into our hearts. So whatever it is for you, maybe it's starting the business, maybe it is going on a missions trip, maybe there's a ministry that you want to start or a nonprofit where you want to give back um, based on some experiences that you've had. God can do exactly what he said he's going to do. We have to just trust, we just have to believe, and he's going to show himself to be exactly who he says he is. So another great study, and we will pick up in two weeks, close out this study for the year. But listen, God slowed me down. I thought <laughs> I thought I was going to move through this experience in God's study uh, pretty quickly, but he slowed me down. So we're actually going to continue this study as we pick up on the flip side in 2020. And I'm believing God for great things for us and for you. So I hope that you will join us there. Have a great evening. God bless.